Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am super excited about today's episode because um, there's been a lot of buzz in the communities about private label and it being the holy grail of Amazon and pretty much anything out there. And while I can tend to agree at some point, I really don't think that people should automatically start there. Uh, we want to talk about scaling your business and many Amazon sellers turn to private label thinking that that is the biggest, fastest, easiest way to get to um, get to the top. And I know that there's a lot of people talking about that out there and everyone claims that it's this holy grail, but I want to talk about why I think it's not and what the alternative should be and just a different approach to private label. Because although I do think there's definitely a uh, private label is lucrative and there's just many things that go along with that, people shouldn't dive in and start there. And there's a lot of reasons why we'll talk about that. But first, I want to let you guys know that <clears throat> after many months people have been asking about the next virtual workshop and guess what it is upon us so i have scheduled another virtual workshop i know that we're still um you know coming through with this pandemic and everything else and just not comfortable yet hosting um bigger larger in-person gatherings but we are going to do another virtual confident wholesale bundlers workshop coming up in march so if you would like more information you guys are hearing it here first um go to mommyincome.com virtual it's going to be a virtual event. It's going to be all online, um, but 100% participation is very important. We're doing group work. We're going to build bundles together. It is going to be phenomenal, just like all the other workshops. And I am just personally inviting you, go check out mommyincome.com slash virtual. I would love to see you at our next virtual workshop. So also real quickly, um, if you're not a part of our Facebook group, I would love to invite you to our Facebook group. Um, it's the Amazon Files Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. You need a code word. Why? Because we don't like spammers, because we don't like people who um, want to just jump in and either sell their stuff or, you know, just spam a bunch of people and uh, looking for dates and all that kind of stuff. Save it for Tinder people. Uh, our Facebook group is not about that. So your code word for this week is poor man's PL. And so put that in the question and answer section when you join the Facebook group and we are happy to have you there. Great sellers there, great people that have been doing this a really long time that can help you out. So <clears throat> let's talk about private labels, shall we? Because this is all a buzz. I've been looking at some other YouTube channels and some other people talking about private label. And while I think they're all smart, amazing individuals, what really <clears throat> rubs me the wrong way is getting people started in a business, in a business model that's super risky in the beginning. You don't want to start off with your life savings or maybe stuff that you're working on for a side hustle that you put money aside and invest it into something that's super risky because you could lose it all. And do you guys know how many clients come to me weekly? I mean, weekly, this is a regular, regular thing. Kristen, can you help me? I have spent all my money on a private label product and I followed so-and-so and I followed their protocols and I did everything they were supposed to do. And now I have $25,000 of a junk pile of a product that I came up with and did all the things that could not, would not sell. No matter how much PPC I put on it, no matter how much it was, I could not get rid of but three units of this stuff. I have to give it away. It breaks my heart, you guys. It breaks my heart every single time because if you are interested in starting a business or growing and scaling a legitimate business and you're not just trying to make some rent money because guess what? Making your rent money here, that's not gonna work out. Like this is not, so sell your stuff on eBay, have a garage sale, like get a second job, that's gonna pay your rent. But like starting a business, you don't start a business with no money, you get a job and then you save up some money and then you start a business um, or you start it very very small with low expectations at first so i'm all about that side hustle i'm all about that you know starting with a shoestring budget that was me i did that um but i didn't expect to pay my rent with that that month knowing that i'm starting with a very small budget so with people that have a little bit more money maybe they have some seed money or investment money or looking for something you know they want to have something that replaces their nine to five or just another investment um Investing into a private label product and selling on Amazon is a beast within itself. So if you really don't know what you're doing in the ins and outs of selling on Amazon in general without private label, adding that to the mix is really, really scary and risky. 
it's really time to hear the truth about private labeling and a unique strategy that I have used to implement private label in a far more profitable way. Most people's reality is that they, they go through other courses or they go through a private label training. And I'm sure the training is fantastic and awesome and has a lot of case studies that prove that this works. But for average everyday normal people, that's not always the case because there's a lot of time, a lot of money, everything invested up front. So we're gonna talk about these private label different strategies and why, why or why not to choose one or the other. You guys can make decisions for yourself, but I just don't wanna be the one to bear your email when you say, I spent you know my $10,000 on this product and these courses and all this stuff and I got nowhere. I couldn't sell a single unit. Ugh, it breaks my heart. So let's just start here. First of all, what is the definition of private label. Um, creating an item or a new and different version of an existing item um, manufactured or packaged for sale under a specific retail name, your own. You are you are not only the manufacturer, but you're the brand name. So Kristen's favorite things, and we're gonna man manufacture um, uh, water bottles, you know? Okay, great, so that's your private label item. Everyone else has water bottles, but you're gonna make something new, unique, different, brand it as your own, that is your private label item. Not to be confused with white label items, which is a product that basically is manufactured by the masses and they, it has, you, you just get to put your label on it. So think of Pantene um, shampoo. So they basically pull their label off. They don't call it Pantene and you can call it whatever you want. So you're using their product. Um, they're, they're manufacturing the actual shampoo and even the packaging or maybe different packaging. That's also part of white label is that you're using their formula for shampoo, but you're calling it your own thing. And that's for, it, it can be identical yet has a completely different brand. So that's white labeling. So that's another easier version of private labeling, but it's also um, you have to differentiate yourself in such a way that people want to buy your brand, the brand they've never heard of. So is private label really the holy grail, the top of the Amazon sourcing food chain? I just want to give you some facts, just some facts about private labeling, some facts about, and, and mind you, this is not coming from a place of nowhere. I have private labeled many items. I have private labeled um, and imported and created something custom and from not from scratch, but like a modification of some things out there. So I have experience in this and I actually use private label products within my bundles. And we will talk about that a little bit later. So what are the advantages of the private label sector? Well, first of all, you own your own product. No one can take that away from you. You own it. Hopefully you have either patents or trademarks or something like that, but you own your own product. So that means that you have control over hopefully manufacturing and packaging and every single thing that comes about it. So if you want a stainless steel flip top water bottle, y'all, that's what I'm talking about here. This is my favorite water bottle. Um, I don't like straws. I don't like the weird ones where they're just anything. I want flip top water bottle and this hooks to your belt or hooks to something or whatever. I love this, my favorite one. If it ever goes out of stock, I'm gonna buy a hundred of them so that I never ever wanna love stainless steel, love the 20 ounce version, fits in the cup holder. Okay, great, enough about my water bottle. But you manufacture it. So if you're making tweaks, you're making something else, you own your product, which means on Amazon, you also own your buy box, which is fantastic. That means you're not product sharing with anyone else. No one else is listing your item. No one else can get your buy box. You have your buy box 100% of the time. You don't have to share it with anyone else. Is that not sounding like the holy grail? Well, of course, it's great, but there's alternatives. Also, the 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 good parts, the benefits of private label are, you know, trademarking and brand registry. Um, because when you have brand registry, which requires a U.S. trademark, um, for those of you that don't know, brand registry gives you so many more options to be able to offer your products and describe your products and your company and your brand and use video and more pictures and more descriptions. It just gives you basically your own little storefront on Amazon that is customizable to your brand and your products. So, that's always a fantastic option to have that. And, or, and, and Amazon makes it dif more difficult to get trademarks and brand registry. 
for that very reason. It's not a privilege that everyone gets. You can't just jump on Amazon and have all these things. Getting a trademark takes nine to 12 months and usually a lawyer and some investment. It also takes, it's a government entity. It is from the government, which means that they value it because it has to go through this entire process. So because of that, it's valued. And then you get brand registry if and only if you get your trademark. That can be done without a private label product, but we'll talk about that too. You also get total control over the product, the listing, the distribution, the manufacturing, all of these different things. Potential expansions into multiple variations of simpler products. So we're talking about my water bottle here. You can make it in multiple colors, multiple styles, multiple sizes. If your product does indeed take off, there's usually potential. If it takes off, it can be very lucrative because you have control over all these things and you do not have to share with someone else, which is, you know, your typical wholesale products, right? Um, if you're just selling straight up wholesale or even retail arbitrage, you're giving the lion's share to the majority of other people. Check your buy box percentage. Just go check. Go check right now. Why not? How much of the buy box do you own on all the products that you're selling right now? because that's the percentage of time that Amazon is showing people your product compared to all the other people. So you're you're kind of grabbing your way into trying to get sales. So um, with the private label products, you actually have, you know, 100% of the buy box and you don't have to share it with anyone. And now there's the downsides of private label. And unfortunately these outweigh many of the other, uh, all the, the benefits, because you can get all of those private benefits and the private label benefits in another way. And we'll talk about that too. But right now let's talk about the downsides of private label. Number one, it's product development. You have to develop your product, even if you're taking an existing product, say this water bottle here, and you want to modify the lid some way so it's more convenient for storage or washing or your own personal convenience, or maybe you've you know figured out a different way to make a water bottle that's more convenient. So you might take a somewhat existing water bottle and modify it slightly, but then you have to design that. You have to get, um, you know, you have to develop that product. You have to find a manufacturer that's going to manufacture that for you and make samples for you and maybe make a dye or maybe make a, um, a mold of it and then make it, tweak it, figure it out, product development. But not just that, you have to do market research and measure all the demographics of your intended audience. Who's gonna buy this? Why is your water bottle special and different than everyone else's? Uh, are you gonna sell it to retail stores or it's only gonna be Amazon? All of these things have to, to filter through. Then you have to research all of your competitors. Now, there's of course always product research and there should always be demographic research and all these things for any product that you're selling. But Amazon sure does make it easy to just look at through product catalogs like wholesale and that per that item's already on Amazon and there's only a handful of sellers and it's doing well. So you can just jump right on and jump right in. Saves you all this headache, right? Certainly. But then you have to find the right manufacturer for your product. You have to have samples made, you have to test them, tweak them, manufacture them, then they have to go through testing if there's any sort of FDA regulations or chemical testing or anything like that, and then shipped back to you for you to then, I'm assuming you're making your things overseas if you're doing it stateside, that's great, but it's also usually more expensive in some sort of way, cuts down on some time. But let's be real, most of the items that we are thinking of private labeling or having manufactured are far, far less expensive in other countries. And so we look to them for manufacturing. They've got it down to a science. They know exactly what they're doing. So um, it's easier to have things manufactured overseas. But then that also takes time and energy and things like that. So, so then you have to develop your brand. So not only did you make a new version of a water bottle and you have now gone through all of this rigorous testing and you know it's, it's ready to kind of be in production and be sold. Now you have to develop a brand because you don't have a brand before. So now you have to not only develop a product and to go all through all of that stuff, but then you have to develop a brand and packaging and marketing to make sure that your product is gonna stand out amongst all of the other water bottles bottles in the world. So that's another thing. Then you've got importing, customs, freight, freight forwarding, all of these different things. Again, everything is learnable. You can learnable. Is that even a word? <laughs> everything you can learn. 
you know, everything has a process. Usually, you know, someone's done it before. You are not the first person to, uh, you know, try to break into private label. So all of these things are learnable, but you have to go through all of those processes and figure them out yourself or pay someone to help you or anything else. So yes, it is possible. It is just very time consuming and expensive upfront. If you're creating your own product or an adaptation of a product, there's a lot of research involved. And of course, you have to make sure that no one else has patents on these things. No, you know, all, all the other research to make sure you're not stepping on someone else's toes, branding, you're going to need FDA clearance on certain things to import it. The entire process can take at least a year depending on some of the roadblocks that you face. Let's not even talk about the roadblocks of like a pandemic that no one could have predicted. Um, but even just without a pandemic, um, there's so many um, roadblocks and you just have to be aware of those. I'm not trying to steer you away from private label. I'm just trying to give you the facts because everyone else wants to paint this like sunshines and rainbows and y'all know me and you know that although yes there's sunshines and rainbows and everything there's also dark clouds and rain and roadblocks and so I like to talk about both sides because that is you can be well informed so if you choose to go into private label and you want to go in these routes just know what you're in for and i'm just letting you know what you're in for and because i've been down the road and i've been down many roads to product sourcing product development all these different things um i've just got some insight into tell you why what and why you want to do these things this way the entire process can take a year or more um mostly or more um, I will tell you that I am getting ready to launch my first full, now mind you, I've made many private label products before, but they were um, smaller private label products that I was putting inside of a bundle. They were generic. They were mostly kind of white label type items rather than full out private label, but we're getting ready to launch our very first full out private label item. It is still a bundle, but we have custom made, manufactured and tweaked one of the pieces of the bundle um, because there's no sense in reinventing the wheel on the other things. Those people got those on lockdown. So we were doing okay with that, but it's expensive. And here's why. The expense is not just the money for the product, but if you are trying to buy some something from overseas is maybe bigger, oversized. Of course, everybody wants to smell, to sell small, inexpensive, um, cheap things that can be air freighted. Okay. That's great. But let's be real. Like to really break into the market, you want to solve a problem or meet a need with your private label product. You want to make sure that there's a market for it and that people want this item and that you don't have as many competitors compete against. Um, let me just be real. We all have great ideas, lots and lots of great ideas. But just because you have a great idea that's a great idea to you does not mean that the entire world is going to think that your idea is the greatest and best. You have to do your research. You have to do all of your research, especially if you're investing hard earned dollars into this product or product line or brand or whatever it is you're doing. You, you can't, it's not just about easy dollar bills. You have to care. You have to care for a long time. You can't just develop an idea, think this is awesome, and then go headlong into it. You have to care even when the times are tough. You have to care about that product for the long term. You have to care about that product so much so that you're willing to work for it for two years almost without seeing a dollar. Just let that settle in for just a second. You have to care that much about this product and about its brand and about launch and about the problem it's going to solve for the customers or the need it's the need it's going to meet so much that you're willing to do it basically for free for a year or two before you see any dollars coming back to you. Now, I don't know about you, but so far I have not cared that much, except for this one product that we're launching soon, that much about a product to where I want to invest that much time, effort, and energy into one thing for that long. I'm kind of ADD. I'm going to be honest. Not totally, but kind of to the point where it's like, I'm going to abandon ship within three months because I'm going to get bored or another idea is going to come along or process isn't going to move fast enough. And it's, a, you're not seeing the return on your investment. It's really, really difficult to not see those results, even in the short term. So you have to be willing to invest that time and energy for the long haul, because it's going to be a long haul. While you're going through all these steps to develop your brand, you must also try to keep in mind, you have to keep your current business afloat. So if you're starting from nothing, just 
you're thinking about private label and you've never done this before, um, just remember that that's about how long it's going to take you before you actually start earning some of your investment back, not to mention profit. That's how long it takes you to just earn some of your investment back. Um, so you're talking 18 months to two years before you even see some of the return on your investment. Maybe you might get luckier and things will go by a little bit faster and you might be in the 12 to 18 month range, but let's just be real. It's going to be at least a year and then probably more like 18 months to two years. So you have to be willing to wait that long to see any pro any return, let alone profit, break even even. So thinking about that, you also, if you have a current business and you're adding this private label product, then you have to continue to keep your current business afloat while you're investing in this other thing. Everything has an upfront cost, manufacturing, samples, redevelopment, tweaking products, uh, expect a large volume order to begin production and expect 30 to 50% on a down payment. They are not going to start off with printing your brand new item or manufacturing your brand new item, even if after all the samples and everything else, without 30 to 50% down. And their production time might be three to six months. So up front, if there's if your item costs a dollar, but then it's it's a dollar, uh, it's 10,000 minimum unit, you know, minimum order quantity. MOQ, minimum order quantity, um, that say it's 10,000. Well, your item costs a dollar to produce. Now you're at $10,000 and they want half of that right now. For some of you, that's no big deal. For some of us, it's everything. So you have to have that and still continue to keep your regular business afloat. Consider that. Also, average manufacturing time is three to six months, depending on what you're making, depending on the factory, how busy they are, all those things. Then you have packaging costs on top of that. So you have packaging costs, whether the manufacturer is gonna to do that for you or you're gonna do it when, it when you get it stateside, whatever that is, there's all kinds of different packaging costs as well. Again, those are gonna be a little bit more upfront. Of course, upfront before you even make sales, there's that. Packaging costs, and then there's legal fees, trademarking, liability insurance, freight. So freight, is free sometimes when you order from wholesalers. They will give you a break if you are ordering from them. But freight is not free on your private label item. The manufacturers are making it for you at a certain price and it is your responsibility to get it from China or India or Taiwan or wherever else you're ordering from to you or your warehouse. You have to pay for that. Last time I did freight shipping, it was four grand. So now we're even talking about 50% down plus freight plus another 50%. You're in for a lot of money, even for something that's very inexpensive, like something that costs a dollar. So just keep thinking about that. Freight, import taxes, tariffs, all the different things. Then talking about expensive here, right? Then you're talking about PPC, right? Most private label people will tell you that you will have to spend a break even or even a loss for the first couple of months to get your item off the ground, pay for PPC, drive traffic, ads, everything else. That is what it takes to build a brand in a big company and a product like that. I bet they didn't tell you this when they were giving you your, your, your YouTube video that was all like, rah, rah, let them, watch us do this in 20 minutes to be able to build this product and order it from Alibaba and bring it over to the, the country and start selling. They forgot to tell you that that takes 12 to 18 months to do. Just saying. Okay. So we talked about it being expensive. That's just the truth. This is even for something that costs $1. Minimum order quantities on a lot of these smaller things tend to be 10,000. They're in the thousands. It's not just like you can order a case of 12 and just hope for the best. No, this is, they're manufacturing something from you they're, to, for it to be worth their time and energy. The minimum order quantity is usually pretty high, even with inexpensive items. So we're talking thousands of dollars, which is fine for some people. Um, but if you're just starting out or it's a side hustle or you're trying to, you're working a nine to five and then doing this. We'll see. Um, and it's also all upfront, every single thing. Now, risky. Let's talk about the risk. We talked about the expense. Okay, those are just facts. You know, whether you feel that's a drop in the bucket for some of you, millionaires, you know, oh, what's 10 grand? Okay, some of us, 10 grand is everything. So we really have to consider the cost there. Also, the risk. There is no guarantees 
that your item is going to pass through a customs inspection. If you don't do your work ahead of time, the only reason I bring this up is because this happened to a client of mine where they went through all the wholesale, the whole private label product, everything. They got to customs and they were their their testing was rejected and they held their items at customs because they didn't pass some sort of inspection or test. So not only is your item that all that money's gone that you paid for upfront plus the freight, it's now stuck in customs and you have to run some sort of rigorous tests on it stateside before they'll clear it from customs. Talk about a nightmare here. So here's the thing, things get held up at customs all the time with no real estimated release date. Sometimes they say, you can't release this into the country until you have FDA approval or you have um, a certain data sheet that makes sure that it doesn't have lead in it or whatever else. There's tons of red tape if something goes wrong. So is private label really the holy grail? The top of the Amazon food chain, the top of any product food chain. If you have deep pockets, if you have time and energy to focus on just this product and you have the energy to go the long haul and go the distance, yes, it can be. It absolutely can be. I've seen people be very successful with, with certain things, but not without all of the due diligence ahead of time before they even make a single dollar. So do the benefits really outweigh the challenges? It depends on how you want to do business. This process, take, this process really takes a lot of time and investment and money. So if you placed all your eggs, what happens if you place all your eggs in this one basket, this one product, and it doesn't work? So why not try something similar that has less risk and is faster, yet has all the same benefits as private label? I call this and have been calling it for years, poor man's private label. It is wholesale bundling. I know, right? This is a big shocker for some of you. No, it's not. You've heard me talk about, I'm the bundle queen. You guys, there's a reason because I've tried all this stuff but not to these degrees. I have private label products. I am launching my first real private label product that now has taken over 18 months to get here and get all the duckies in a row. Only after I've been in business for 10 years. And there's a reason because it takes time to learn all the other processes. If you have a great, amazing product, like there's lots of companies out there that don't sell on Amazon and have great products. But as soon as they try to jump into Amazon and they think, oh, I'm just gonna sell this thing on Amazon, no problem. Then they realize they have no idea how to sell on Amazon because it's a completely different beast than selling out of a brick and mortar store or any other online entity. It's different than your Shopify store. It's different than eBay. It's different than all these other places. Amazon is its own beast and you have to be able to understand how it works before you can just launch a private label product. Um, so how do I do private label differently? Wholesale bundles. It's less risky. It's inexpensive alternative to private label. Bundles alone can work for a time, but they're not always enough to keep all the competition away because if you don't build bundles properly, then other people will just coattail your hard work and they'll just jump on your listing and hijack it. And, you know, there's people out there training other people to do that. Just wait for somebody to do all the hard work and then jump on their listing. Well, we're smarter than that. So we're not going to do it that way, but bundles alone can work for a time. We bundle because of all of these different reasons. Bundling gives you all of the benefits of private label first of all, because Amazon has changed all their rules and you must have custom packaging for your bundle. Because of that, that automatically sets you apart from hijackers because your custom made packaging, whether it's a hang tag, whether it is in an actual box or a poly bag, and I have a whole training on this. So if you guys haven't seen the custom packaging training, go to mommyincome.com, look at the classes, look at the courses, learn with us, you'll find um, the custom packaging training. If you're a wholesale bundle student, you already have it. So uh, why haven't you watched it? I don't know. But to, to get custom packaging, it does not have to be super expensive and you don't have to buy in huge bulk to get started. You can get started smaller. And the great thing about wholesale bundling is that buying products from wholesale 
companies that are already making products and creating a convenient bundle for your to solve a problem or meet a need for your customers on Amazon or wherever, you are creating a brand new product because you're putting other products together. So think of like a gift basket, an accessory kit. Maybe you're manufacturing one of those things. I've also taught people to do private label bundles with the private label items that are sitting in their garage that they couldn't sell. So because of that, you can take that private label item, bundle it with a couple other things, put your brand name on it and sell it on Amazon. And now you have increased the value of that particular item and you have created a bundle. So number one, you have the benefits of private label, especially if if you have a trademark, especially if you have brand registry, but even if you don't, you can have your custom packaging with bundled items inside, show Amazon your brand, get a GTI and exemption for your brand on Amazon, Kristen's favorite things, XYZ store gifts, whatever you want to call your brand to make sure that it's not trademarked already. And um, then you can have all the benefits of private label without the long-term risky investment. You're not spending tens of thousands of dollars on bundles. You can get a wholesale accounts right now today for less than $300 a pop. Sometimes there's minimum, no minimum orders. You can even build bundles from retail arbitrage items to get started. So building bundles and then putting them in your own custom packaging, following all the rules of Amazon, and you've built yourself a private label product that you can execute way faster. I can order from wholesale companies and have my products in a week. I can test six or 12 bundles at a time. You're, you're talking a couple hundred dollars instead of thousands of dollars in a year or two. You're talking in a couple of weeks, you can have a bundle up and running and test it out and see how the marketplace goes. Now, of course, proper research and proper investment and proper bundling is really important for this. So yes, there is some learning that needs to be done. You don't just slap three products together and hope for the best and you know keep going forward. That's not how you do things, but a little bit of time, a little bit of investment. So you don't have to bet the farm on one thing. You can test three bundles at a time, see which one works best, and then go with that one and Forget the rest. You don't have to buy $10, tens of thousands of units of one thing. I mean, honestly, I would never want to do that. The market changes so fast and so quickly. And by the time you've got a product figured out, somebody probably figured out a little bit better. Let's just be honest. Like that happens. So not everybody has these huge breakthrough products that are like the best invention since light spread. Although there's some people that do, and that's great. And I'm so thankful for them. I own half of their products, I'm sure. Uh, but the idea there is that while you're doing that, something else has to pay your bills. Something else has to uh, build your business and keep it going. But with bundles, you can do it faster and easier and still enjoy all the same benefits without all of the risk. So th the other thing too, that's going to set you apart, because some people are like, yeah, I've built bundles, but everybody jumps on my work and it's just not worth the work. And it's just not worth the effort when someone else just jumps on. I'm going to be the first one to tell you if someone's jumping on your bundle like that, it's because you're doing it wrong. Number one, you need to have a value added item inside of that bundle that either you're making or you're, you have your own brand and custom packaging so they can't jump on your bundle because they don't have that item. So that enforceability is even better when you have brand registry, but you can manufacture something stateside or internationally, something smaller, something inexpensive that adds value to your package. Now, I'm not saying get a bunch of keychains with your brand on them and throw them in every package. People do that, but that does not add value. And the person that's buying that item knows that and sees that and sometimes will not even buy that item because they're like, I don't want your dumb keychain. People throw those away. But what could you make or what could you manufacture or what could you put in there that's inexpensive that you could get? And I'll tell you how in just a second that you could put inside your bundle that actually adds value to the product. So packaging is one of those things. Good quality custom packaging and protection of that item, or say it's a gift set that you're selling and you have a really nice custom box inside that gift set. That adds value, even though it's not 
an actual item someone might use. They might actually use that. The customer sees that you've taken time to invest in good quality packaging and they thank you for that. And they like that, they leave reviews. There's really good things about that. But it could also be what you do to get started to set your bundle apart from something else is like you've seen swag, right? Of course, mommy income has swag all over the place. Here's one example. I know you you podcasters can't see this, but this is mommy income swag. It has sticky notes with my logo on it. So if you are doing a stationary set and someone is, you know, purchasing a pen and a um, say a pen and a notebook or something like that that has to do with or office supplies of some sort, that would make sense, right? You're giving them free sticky notes. Okay, great. That goes along with the theme. But don't throw your sticky notes into things like you're selling a variety of granola bars. That it makes no sense. No, that does not add value. That just annoys people. So adding value, but you can get something like that printed from a print shop from somewhere local, you could have a non copyrighted saying or meme or something put on something and put it into your bundle as part of the value add, make sure it makes sense for the bundle. Um, and our first private label white label type item was 63 cents. It took about eight weeks to import it. It's 500 of minimum order per style. That was something we put inside of multiple bundles because it made sense and it was complimentary. So you can also do private label to a point, but it doesn't have to break the bank, especially if you're doing multiple bundles that you can add that item into. It makes a lot more sense that way. You can pair your personal private label item that you've already made with non private label items for minimal risk. There's no red tape. There's no importing that, that's extravagant. There's nothing crazy like that. You don't have to buy huge, large quantities of one thing at one time. You don't have to wait to see your investment. You don't have to wait for your ROI. You don't have to wait for to at least break even. You can do this in less than a month. And I dare I say a couple of weeks, if you've already been up and running and selling, you have some wholesale accounts, you can start this right now. Learning how to bundle is not very difficult, but there's definitely a process, of course. My process is the Wholesale Bundle Framework, and it is a 12-step process of research and learning how and where to bundle and the best way to do things so that you can get organic. Yes, I said that, organic. There are people challenging me on LinkedIn right now, like, like bad messages that say, there's no way that you're getting organic ranking for all these bundles, and they basically want me to prove it to them. I'm like, first of all, no, thank you. Second of all, watch. Watch my students read them, read the stuff in the hub, read the stuff in, in, in there that says, I launched my first bundle, sold 200 units right away with zero PPC. This is super hot fire, people. There's a reason why this framework works. This is a reason why when people do it this way that they're getting results other people aren't getting. Number one, they're not waiting two years to launch a bundle. They're doing it now. They're testing it now. But number two, they're getting organically ranked because they know how to build listings. They know how to look for keywords. They know how to title their stuff. Why? Because it's in the wholesale bundle system. So it's just one of those things that if you're interested in private label or you've heard about this, or maybe you've been burned by private label and it scares you and you're ready to give up, there's solutions for this. And it does not have to be expensive or risky. There's always risk involved and there's always investment involved. But it doesn't have to be your life savings and two years of your life and your time and all that. It can be soon. So are you ready to bundle? Are you ready to take that next step into poor man's private label? And I'm like, I own that and I claim that. Why? Because when I started bundles, I was poor. <laughs> I couldn't afford to spend $25,000 in two years on a private label product when everyone else was talking about it. So I created my own bundles and started testing the market before I went deep into the water. I mean, I think that's pretty smart. I don't want to invest all this stuff and all this time, energy and money because somebody um, else did it and they proved it right. Great. But in the meantime, I got to keep my family fed and I got to keep my business going. I can't just abandon everything to do that. So if you're considering starting bundling, if you have questions about bundles, if you have questions about this process, um, reach out to me, admin at mommyincome.com. You can post questions under videos. You can ask the, the Facebook group, of course. Hashtag poor man's private label is the, um, the code words get in the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us 
you can come to the Facebook group, ask some questions about bundling there. Lots and lots of people bundle and bundle successfully. Ask them, don't even ask me, just go ask everyone else who's doing it and in the Facebook group and they will give you some good tips and things like that. But get the wholesale bundle system. That's really gonna help you. It's gonna help you learn how to wholesale, learn how to bundle, learn how to write listings, learn how to take good photographs or outsource that learn how to use a prep center so you don't ever have to touch your inventory. Everything is in the wholesale bundle system. And I just challenge you to try it out. Try out poor man's private label. You don't have to spend two years developing a brand new product and doing all that. How about two weeks? Sounds better to me. So again, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. If you want the wholesale bundle system, mommyincome.com slash system. You can get the wholesale bundle system right here. And now you can start today learning how to bundle. I'd love to hear your testimony about in a couple of weeks when you launch your first bundle. I love those comments in the Facebook group and they happen more and more often each time. So Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I'm thankful that you're here listening to me. Let's get ready to bundle. I'll see you next time. Same time, same place on the Amazon Files.